I like cars a lot. So when I saw that Clinton Jones, AKA Punisher, was hosting a render challenge for vehicles, I knew I had to make an entry. I've been meaning to submit a piece to one of his challenges for a while now, but better late than never, I guess. Just a bit of a background on my project. I had rebuilt an engine for my old Jeep a few years ago and just really loved learning about the guts of the car and more about how it worked. I wanted to make an entry that would show some of the inner workings of a vehicle. I'm a huge Toyota fan, especially the Supra. I really like the Mark IIs uh, from the 80s and I thought it would work well with the type of look I'm going for, just because it's boxier than some of the newer ones. Although mm, that Mark IV Supra has got to be my favorite. I'm not very practiced in technical modeling based on specific dimensions, and I think the end product has more personality anyway if you just eyeball it, so the moving parts in this project are a bit janky. Just as a quick summary on how an engine works, most engine movements are broken down into four steps, or strokes. The intake stroke brings fuel and air into the cylinder, the compression stroke compresses the mixture, the power stroke ignites the mix pushing the piston down, and the exhaust stroke pushes the used up mixture out as the piston moves back up. In an inline six like this, this process is happening in all six cylinders at different times to turn the crankshaft and create power. One stylistic choice I made for my project was slowing the engine way down to an unrealistic speed. The speed on the final render is close to a couple hundred RPM, but a car going that speed would have an RPM of closer to three to 5,000. And in real life, the pistons would be moving up and down close to 100 times a second, which would be too fast to see. So it's unrealistic, but I think it looks better in the end. All right, so let's hop into Blender and take a quick look at the Supra model. So here we have the beautiful cherry red Supra. It's actually pretty ugly, uh, if we're honest. It's um, kind of janky. You'll notice there's um, a lot of imperfections on the outside, but I learned to choose my battles and pick where I'm gonna have the most detail. And because the exterior is only on screen for about a second and it's moving really fast and has motion blur, I didn't want to spend a whole lot of time modeling something that um, I wouldn't really get any result out of. I did spend a lot of time on the more mechanical things and I've sorted these into categories. So the exterior, I can hide that. And um, yeah, you can see the interior, but I can also hide that as well. And we're left with just the mechanical. And this is further categorized into a couple different layers. So we have the engine, the transmission, suspension and steering, and other. And we can individually look at these. So let's start with the engine. And we can go ahead and play the animation here. So you'll notice it's um, animated from the crank, pistons, valves, and the camshaft. It's fairly accurate to how a real inline six engine would work. Uh, all the dimensions were eyeballed though. So if you try to make this in real life um, using this as a model, it would definitely blow up um, just because it's not balanced. Uh, it's not perfectly centered in everything. Um, it's just eyeball, but it gets the job done for visual purposes. And we have the transmission. Not gonna lie, I, uh, I'm kind of stumped by transmissions. I get the general idea, but um, I would never want to work on a transmission myself. And uh, yeah, I'm glad that uh, there's other people who can do that for me. But I did my best to make a somewhat accurate transmission. And you can see the drive shaft goes out. And then the rear differential here is modeled as well. And so overall, it's fairly simple. And you'll notice there's quite a few things missing, but I didn't want to spend too much time on stuff. Um, and the real thing was I didn't want it to get in the way because in the final shot, um, the focus is mainly on the engine itself. And if I had too many hoses, um, too many pumps and other components here, um, it would kind of block that view and make it harder to see. And it would take a lot of time to model. So I kept it pretty slim and minimal just to get the idea across, but I think it turned out pretty well. You'll notice as well that the outside of the car has this lovely sticker on it, 
and you can actually order one of those off of my website using the link in the description below uh, if you're interested in picking one of those up in real life um, it would support me and my channel the actual scene itself is pretty simple just a road and uh, I kept the scene pretty minimal I didn't want to take away from the car itself because the car is definitely the focal point and I needed a lot of contrast between the background and the wireframe and so I didn't want to to interfere with that so as far as animating and controlling the car I put together a pretty simple armature rig so I have my main bone here and that moves and scales everything and uh, that's kind of the the center point and then I have a body control so this lets me rotate the body only separate from the chassis and then I have my steering rig here so these are mirroring the rotation of this bone and so I can have control of that as well and it still freely spins but also steers so for the actual scene, I converted everything to wireframe, except for the mechanical components that are front and center. And those I kept just a solid mesh. And then I used a couple modifiers on these as well. So the wireframe modifier, it's one of my favorites. Uh, it just, it's a great way to show off your model. And then I used the build modifier. So towards the start, there's nothing. And then it starts to come in um, so it gives kind of the idea that the, the car is starting just from the engine and then by the end it's a fully, uh, fully fledged car. Now for the effect at the end where the body of the car comes around the wireframe, I follow the tutorial by Surface Studio, which I'll link down below. And it makes it super easy to have a, an effect like this without having to hand animate everything. And so it's dynamic, you can adjust it however you want. It, what's basically going on is the faces on this vehicle are moving out along their normals in proximity to this sphere. So as we move this sphere closer, these shapes, uh, these faces go out and then back in as the sphere moves away. And so it's a pretty simple setup, um, not a whole lot of nodes. Um, so if you're interested in that effect at all, definitely go check out the tutorial. Um, super good stuff. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I did add some finishing touches. I did a little bit of noise on the location and rotation of the car, just so I had some nice bumping as it went along, and then a little bit of subtle camera shake, and I finished it off with some sound effects. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Huge shout out to Clint for putting this challenge on. And a huge thank you to Flowerhead for making the music in this video. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.